So good evening once again, um, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, from the community of Archinect. Uh, it's a wonderful pleasure to host you on day four uh, in this facade, architectural facade design and engineering week hosted by Archinet and Technal Middle East. Uh, my name is Arvind Kumar. I am the pre-construction manager for Hydro Building Systems. And uh, today we will walk you through um, a little bit about this whole facade design and engineering week, which we co-curated with Archinet. I will give you a quick introduction about Technal for those who have not attended the session in the last uh, three or four days. And uh, then uh, segue into our uh, core topic for today, which is the fire and life safety solutions from a building envelope uh, perspective. And then as usual, we will have our interesting Q&A session at the end of today's uh, program. So um, when we first started this uh, discussion with Archinet, we uh, tried to pick and choose which would be the best topic suitable for uh, uh, discussion on facades, windows and doors. And uh, uh, when we showed them a pool of content, which we have, uh, Archinet suggested, hey, this topic of facade needs a lot of attention and a lot of uh, information sharing. So I think we should dedicate a whole week for uh, this uh, content. And we're super excited and super thrilled and very grateful to Archinet uh, to uh, organize this entire week packed with information and we started off uh, really from the from the basics uh, if you joined us on saturday we had a, a discussion on the basic parameters which one should look for when they are choosing a window door and a facade and then we uh, moved into talking a little bit about the basics of curtain wall facades and that was on sunday yesterday my khalid uh, walked you through some of the new trends uh, which we are expecting and which we could see uh, even today in the design fraternity on windows, doors and facade. And uh, today we're going to talk on a very important topic, which is all about fire and life safety. Tomorrow we're going to have a very interesting session on the world of digitalization and how uh, facade uh, components can be brought into the digital world, especially windows, doors and facade. We're going to talk a lot about some interesting BIM tools for Revit, uh, SketchUp, Archicad. So please uh, do join us tomorrow uh, for that interesting session. And the grand finale on Thursday, we're going to talk all about sustainability, energy efficiency, and how facades can contribute to what is the buzzword today, uh, circular economy. So that's the program uh, for the next uh, couple of days. So please join us in these wonderful discussions which we are co-curating with Akinet. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit about Technal, who we are. We belong to the Hydro Group. So Hydro Group hails from Norway, which is the the only global and complete aluminum company. You know, it is having more than 114 years of experience in the business of aluminum with more than 35,000 employees in 150 locations and spread over 40 countries. Um, it's a global and a complete company because we have our own bauxite mines. We produce our own alumina. We produce our own hydroelectric power, hence the name of our company, Hydro. We use these uh, this clean energy. I think hydroelectric power is one of the most cleanest form of energy. We use this energy to convert this alumina into primary metal. And from uh, this alumina, we're also making rolled products and extrusions. And then we complete this value chain by doing recycling as well. So where do you see Hydro's product? You see it in transport automotive, in brands like Tesla and Jaguar and Land Rover. Uh, various uh, cars are now getting lightweighted and they're using aluminum instead of steel. We of course see our products in building and construction, in packaging, the daily food you eat. We see a lot of aluminum use in the format of foils, cans. You see Hydro's products there. Our components are used, our products are used in electrical and electronic uh, components as well, machinery, and also consumer durables. Um, so as a building unit, as uh, Technal, we come under the extrusion business unit. And in the extrusion business unit, we also have precision tubing, which is a indirect extrusion used in industrial applications. And then we have the building systems, which are buildings, windows, doors, and facades uh, for architectural uh, applications. Under the building systems, we have four very strong brands. We have Vicona, which is a German brand hailing over 70 years of experience. We have Technal, which is a French brand 
which has more than 60 years of experience, Domal from Italy, Sapa from Scandinavia. All these brands put together uh, are able to contribute to various kinds of windows, doors, and facades. So if there's any kind of window door or facade which you're looking for, it's available within our portfolio. Now, Technal is a much more popular brand here in the Middle East. Uh, Technal has been here for more than 40 years. It hails from south of France, from a beautiful city called Toulouse. It is the same city where Airbus is manufactured. So if you ever fly again on Airbus, uh, you will definitely remember Technal. And we're spread over five continents with 60 years of experience, and we are claiming to be a, a great partner for architects and designers. And that's what makes us very unique and special and we thrive in R&D. We do a lot of research and development to ensure that we have uh, constantly updated and upgraded our products and services and solutions. So uh, the reigning champion of uh, the football World Cup, of course, it's uh, France, Airbus, as I mentioned, I hope you all get to fly again very soon and the Eiffel Tower. So when you remember or see any of this, you will definitely remember Technal being a French brand. All right, so what are the products we offer? We do sliding systems, windows, doors, facades, and we also do aluminum fire rated windows, doors, and facade, bullet and burglar resistant uh, sliders, windows, and doors. We're gonna talk more in detail about that today. We also do handrails and pergolas and conservatories. So what's unique about Technal, uh, all of our products are tested and tried for three years in our innovation and test center in Toulouse. Uh, we do a lot of prototyping, we do a lot of upgrades on the product before it actually comes to the market. So which gives you a peace of mind uh, when you use a Technal product because all of them are pre-tested for various uh, functional parameters which we discussed earlier in this facade design week. Another thing which we're very proud of is our innovation and test center hosts specific uh, components and tooling uh, for air tightness, water tightness, structural studies, seismic movements. We have our own dedicated acoustic lab, a joinery for uh, R&D on fabrication, and we have our own R&D center for net zero energy buildings. So if you are an architect and if you are doing research and development on any of these topics, uh, we would be more than happy to welcome you and collaborate with you uh, on these uh, topics. And of course, our R&D centers open uh, to welcome all of you to do joint collaborations. I've heard, I've received so many emails over the last few days uh, about uh, helping uh, students and universities uh, on their topics. Uh, I promise you once this week is over, we will get back to you uh, one on one and uh, we will see how much best we can uh, work together with you to help you in your R&D. So in a nutshell, Technal has been here uh, in the Middle East for 40 years. We are serving more than 10 countries. Uh, we have more than 150 authorized metal builders across the region. We have completed more than 2,500 projects. Our team is 95 members strong and we have three warehouses of 60,000 square feet across the Middle East serving our customers and stakeholders uh, all the time during the year. Uh, the, our headquarters in the Middle East is in Bahrain, so that's a nice photo of our headquarters. Uh, and these are some photos of our warehouse where we store all our accessories which come from France and the extrusions, which are ready to go uh, whenever there's a requirement. Our beautiful office and showroom in Dubai uh, and, and Bahrain. If you're ever passing by any of these two places, do let us know, we'd be more than happy to invite you to our showroom where you can uh, touch and feel and experience the products in its life uh, size. And that's a lovely picture of our team in Dubai. And uh, they're always uh, enthusiastic and passionate about what uh, they do in the business of windows, doors, and facades. So if you have any questions uh, and if you're passing by any time towards, towards these two places, you're welcome to join us. So apart from profiles and accessories, what does Technal do? Uh, we are offering tools and methods for our fabricators. We do a lot of training. Uh, this is one of those uh, opportunities we have with Arkinet to do that with all of you. We do a tremendous amount of testing for all our products uh, for various requirements, uh, not only from the functional parameters point of view, but also in terms of uh, automation and, and building physics and so on. Uh, project service is something which I'll talk to you about in, in detail. This is something which we are 
proud of. We are probably one of the few companies who do this at free of cost for architects. And we have a whole bunch of uh, services which we are uh, uh, catering to, uh, to support our customers and stakeholders to complete their project uh, in, uh, in the expectation. So in terms of project service, um, as an architect, you know you would start your project anywhere from the concept schematic stage where you are typically reviewing um, the possibilities available in the market. So here at this situation, at this stage, we are su suggesting you the right material, the right sizes, uh, you know, the project parameters which you should consider while uh, choosing the facade. And as you move on to the detailed design stage, we are providing more accurate IFC level details uh, with interfaces so that you are able to uh, relate this uh, product to your project. We are offering extensive BIM support. We're gonna talk a lot about that tomorrow and also assisting you in getting a approximate costing so you know what you're drawing will fit the budget of your customer and your, and your stakeholders. At this stage also, you would want to know how the real material looks like so we offer you corner samples and, and mock-up samples to really experience how the product will fit into your project in, in terms of uh, real-time scale. And as you move into tender stage, I think this is where uh, you would need to know more realistic estimates in terms of cost. And this is where we bring in our authorized Technal approved metal builders uh, or installers, and they can uh, offer you the prices for the project. And this stage also has an opportunity to do value engineering. I think this term has been widely misused in, in today's uh, marketplace, but however, uh, we always look at uh, engineering value to the project. So uh, at this particular stage, we always try to recommend better propositions, which not only uh, helps you in retaining the design intent, but also uh, giving you a better look at, uh, at the price point as well. And last but not the least, at the construction stage, and this is where we have uh, an army of engineers who are out in the field um, and helping your resident engineers at site to ensure that whatever products has been proposed and drawn in the schematic and detailed design stage and proposed during the tender stage are actually being used and installed in the right fashion at the construction stage. One thing which we are very uh, uh, proud of is we are the only company who insists on the architect to demand technology seal on the shop drawings so that there's absolutely no confusion and uh, and there's no um, questions in or doubts in terms of the, the fixation or the interfaces or the, or the quality of product which is being used. So this is something which is very unique and I invite architects to insist on having Technal to uh, have the shop drawings signed by Technal. All right, so what kind of projects do we do? And this is something again, it's very unique to Technal. We do uh, multiple uh, formats of projects from education, uh, schools, cultural complex, residential, private residential could be as small as a villa or a, or a luxury residential uh, palace, could be offices, retail, uh, hospitals, uh, health and well-being and tourism related projects such as hotels and so on. Some of my favorite projects in Saudi Arabia, which we have completed, this is the King's Road Tower. It's about 170 meters in Jeddah. And what's really unique, that it hosts one of the world's largest LED screen on the facade. Uh, this is a nice project called Burj Ramla. This is also in the center of Riyadh, a very uber luxury uh, residential apartment. This is Stars Avenue Mall in Jeddah, also quite an interesting striking facade as they now incorporated a wonderful curved LED screen on the facade. And this is uh, something which you cannot miss when you enter Jeddah. We have the King Abdullah Specialized Hospital, a children's hospital in Jeddah where we use double skin facade, quite an interesting project as well. The Riyadh Metro stations, and if you are from Riyadh and uh, you're starting to experience the Metro soon, you will encounter our, our products on the stations and, uh, and you'll be excited to see uh, most of our products and interesting solutions being used there. And uh, we don't forget uh, history, and this is one of the first projects in Jeddah which used curtain walling system back in 1983, which is a Bridgestone office. And I'm proud to say that even today it stands perfectly fine and has uh, been uh, tested across various different weather conditions over the past 20 years and it's still in pristine condition. And this is Jabal Al Omar in the holy city of Mecca, where you also see the use of technical products in terms of windows, doors and facade. 
in Dubai. We have done some very interesting iconic projects. This is the Adra Skyview Towers, which has been rated as uh, the most Instagrammable location. This wonderful swimming pool, which is right on the top of the tower, which overlooks the Burj Khalifa, is a really interesting spot uh, not to miss whenever you pass by Dubai. This is Burj Vista, which is also quite an interesting project with inclined balconies uh, done by Adrian Smith, Gordon Gill, another fantastic project close to the sky view. This is Dubai Design District. This is probably the go-to spot if you're an architect and if you're in Dubai. This is a building you have to visit because it hosts one of the finest creative architectural firms in the world from Foster and Partners to Kalathrava to Divan and, and, and you name it. All of them have their offices here in, in Dubai Design District. So again, the facade has been honed and done by uh, Technal. All right, so that was a quick introduction about what Technal does and what we do in the region. And today I jump into our, our, our main topic for the day, which is life safety design for facade. Now, uh, we all know that we spend 90% of our time indoors and research uh, done by a very uh, famous US agency says that uh, we spend uh, in a traditional pre-COVID era ranging from schools to the mall to uh, inside vehicles and especially if you're in Dubai or Riyadh uh, you spend most of the time in your car uh, trying to navigate the traffic uh, during peak hours and you spend some time in outdoors and uh, in factories in restaurants and other indoors so this is a nice curve which shows that uh, how much people time spend time in buildings it could be from home to office to school and so on and malls and so on but po during this COVID era, I think over the last six months, I think this um, graph will look flat and will look only in one area, which is the home, because we've been living and spending a lot of time inside uh, our own homes and our own apartments. So it is very important that um, the space which we are in, it needs to be safe because we are spending most of our time, our loved ones are spending most of the time within these confined spaces. So the building envelope, which if you remember, and if you attended our first uh, few sessions on when we talked about parameters, your skin, uh, like the human skin, the facade uh, is, is acting like a skin for your building. And uh, it has to take care of mother nature, which we discussed in our previous sessions, which is wind, heat, rain, dust, uh, noise, and creating that ambient uh, environment, user-centric uh, comfort within buildings, you know, and we talked about all this uh, over the previous uh, sessions. But then we, the building skin also needs to uh, worry about the human nature. Uh, then this is, um, uh, events and disasters caused because of human uh, negligence, one could say. And this causes uh, smoke, fire, uh, and, and you know, you have a lot of cases uh, which has happened over the past few years due to human negligence. Um, but the building uh, is also exposed to uh, some kind of uh, forced entry, which is uh, not very prevalent in our region, but uh, uh, one cannot uh, predict when this could happen in terms of robbery and theft. Blast, uh, we all know uh, the recent incident in uh, Beirut was a very unfortunate event. But again, these are all uh, events which one could say are due to human negligence broadly. So we as architects and designers and, and building stakeholders need to pay attention and design our buildings to not only protect from mother nature, but also from human nature. And that's essentially my topic for today. And, and human nature is very um, complicated. You can never predict uh, how humans behave. It's a very cultural issue. It is also um, evolving over time. I mean, today's uh, most famous uh, time pass is to play PUBG. And the only thing PUBG helps you to do is to inflict violence. And the thought process of violence is always getting implanted in your head. The negligence in Beirut was a great example, uh, again, um, unfortunately, for, for the people who were affected. And even um, smoking shisha and balconies, you know, this is all... Uh, uh, potential um, potential opportunities to to uh, promote human negligence but we as building um, engineers and stakeholders need to be uh, designing buildings uh, smartly in a way that 
uh, we can at least take care of basic uh, negligence components of, of human and protect our buildings against uh, these kind of incidents. So essentially we have two types of um, uh, situations or, or rather technologies which we could talk about when it comes to life safety. You have the active protection and then you have the passive protection. So today we're going to talk more about passive and, and walk you through some of the different elements which uh, we consider are quite important uh, depending upon the nature of the building and the nature of the building's importance to that uh, locality and so on. So the first uh, 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 factor which we want to talk about is bullet resistance. And uh, bullet resistance uh, means that not bulletproof, but it resists to certain amount of um, uh, bullet entry. So as per the European standard, we have uh, bullet resistance classified from FB1 to FB7. So as the category of weapon used on uh, the uh, uh, for the pro for the uh, infiltration, we are classifying it. For example, FB1 is for rifles. FB2 is an automatic pistol, which is a 9mm Luger. FB3 is uh, to resist against the revolver. FB4 is to uh, protect against the 44 m revolver. FB5 is the assault rifle. FB6 for another higher category of assault rifle. And today in FB7, uh, they have a new kind of bullet which has been developed where it not only uh, hits your hits through your body but also goes one more round just to make sure that you're fully killed so when we are talking about such categories uh, of uh, of uh, bullet resistance you're also using a certain category of glass so right from fb1 to fb7 we have br1 to br7 and then we have a special category for shotguns, which is called FSG, and the glass which is used there is SG2. So the standards we are referring to is uh, both American and European. We have EN1522, and American standards is uh, ASTM F1233. So armored frames and bulletproof glasses really protect people and, and goods against any kind of criminal attack. So you find this most commonly used in banks police stations and prisons. And we as Technal, we have uh, developed our range of products in curtain wall uh, up to FB6. And very recently we have done up to FB7. In doors, we can go up to FB6. In windows and sliders, we can also go up to FB6 category. So how does the profile look like? And it's completely different from how a standard curtain wall is, uh, um, is being designed. The standard curtain wall will, if you remember our session before, we had a, a mullion transom, but we also had something called thermally broken nose. We had our glazing gaskets. So in, in principle, we have a, a much more extended mullion nose compared to a standard curtain walling. And we call this uh, in our uh, category of products as geod -M Excess. Um, what this product uh, is something which we have to be very uh, mindful about. This whole product is completely aluminium. There is uh, uh, this is something which uh, most of the architects prefer because conventionally the bulletproof uh, framing metal is always steel. But the problem with steel is that you have very limited choice of colors and it does not match the um, aesthetic feel when you have elements which are non bulletproof uh, which are in aluminium and you have suddenly components like um, uh, steel coming into picture there's no uniformity the second thing uh, which architects prefer about aluminium uh, is it's also lightweight so it is easy on the structure compared to your uh, traditional steel curtain walling um, in this curtain wall arrangement, the thing which is very unique is your armoring. This armoring ensures that the bullet does not pass through into the uh, living space where people are residing. The glass, as you see here, are as thick as 50 mm, and this is uh, important to uh, protect from the uh, bullet to enter through the glass. We also have a very specialized uh, steel component which is uh, behind the uh, cover cap and this is ensuring that there is no bullet passing through your through your cross-sectional areas you know where the mullion and transom meet so there are no weak zones uh, in this entire curtain wall arrangement 
So this is something which we have enhanced now with FB7 uh, for a project in, in Saudi Arabia where they insisted on having the FB7 category and we have successfully uh, su supplied the FB7 curtain wall as well. Now, along with the curtain wall, obviously, you need some kind of entrance elements. So we have in that range the cobalt PT and the cobalt slider, PT and GT. And these are based on a single or a double row of armoring plates, just like how you've seen in the curtain walling, which are integrated onto your opening frame and the fixed frame. Now, these armoring plates are uh, usually steel, but depending upon the category of uh, of bullet uh, resistance, uh, you can choose between steel or aluminium. So this is our uh, bulletproof door, which is uh, can take an infill up to 66 mm, which means it can take up to uh, BR6 category and above if required. And of course, you see all the um, infills are with your armoring to give you that protection for any bullet entry, uh, which is happening through your frames. Like the hinge door, we also have the sliding system and uh, we are probably the only company who manufactures bulletproof sliding windows and sliding doors. And as you notice here, we have a lot of um, armory uh, fixed attached to your uh, uh, framing. At the infill, it could go up to 60 watt EPIP, which is good for FP6 uh, category. And it is coming with multi-point lock and so on. Now, um, uh, when you have a, a, a project where you need to have uh, consistent uh, resistance against bullet, you can also have uh, requirements, uh, various requirements, depending upon the security consultant's advice. So it is important to understand what is the uh, level of risk the building is exposed to, and then accordingly choose the bulletproof uh, products which are required for the project. So uh, we hear a lot of people come to us and say, we need bulletproof, but it's very important to ask the question, what category, what is the level of risk, what is the security uh, consultant's uh, requirement, and then subsequently, uh, offer the product. Now, by having all these uh, bulletproof uh, framing, very interesting because it's uh, helping you in safety, but this does not mean that uh, they are not tested for the other functional parameters. So these products are also tested for air tightness, water tightness, structural stability, of course, to ensure that the product works as a holistic unit, not only for uh, mother, not only for human nature protection, but also from mother nature protection as well. I'm going to show you a small video of how we test uh, one of these uh, sliding doors. It's very interesting. Uh, it's a super, um, super interesting video. And I'm going to play you this uh, now, which gives you a nice demonstration of how the bulletproof testing is being done. So all these tests happen in a certified laboratory where uh, you always take into consideration uh, a visit by third party. The whole assembly is witnessed by the third party. Uh, of the of these windows so that there is no conflict in terms of the components which are used there you see these are the armorings which i talked to you about in the earlier slide which are incorporated onto your shutters and frame this is your corner cleat which helps you to join the mitre joint of your uh, sash and frame and then we incorporate the gaskets and the self-locating connectors help to assemble the window so there you go the window is ready and now we bring the big 50 mm glass. You can see how thick the glass is. And it is uh, nicely positioned onto the sliding sash. <clears throat> and then we close up the, the product with the gasket. Now we take the uh, unit into the, into the testing area. And this is where the choose the amount of gunpowder on the bullet that will determine the category. For example, it's BR1 or BR2 or up to BR6. So that is uh, measured and uh, placed in the bullet so that, uh, and is also witnessed by the third party. <clears throat> and then this is the equipment which shoots uh, uh, the, uh, the bullet. And as you see here, various spots are being shot, the frame, the shutter, to test the complete uh, homogeneity of the system. Of course, they shoot at the glass as well because the glass is also uh, needs to be tested. So this is the shot at the glass and they mark all the zones where the bullet has been hit 
the most important area would be uh, at the corners because these are usually considered as the weak points in any uh, window or a facade or a curtain wall or a door for that matter. The joints are very important and uh, as part of the testing even the joints are shot at. So obviously the, the idea is that the bullet should not pass through, uh, pass through the units. Uh, recently, uh, I will not name uh, where we uh, supplied this project, but it was for one of the uh, army uh, units in the region. And uh, when they had to test uh, these doors, they said, no, 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 we don't want uh, to do it in the lab. We want to test it in our own uh, army field. And, and they asked us to bring the specimen there and we did that. And then they called us, okay, Technal, stand behind the window and we want to shoot. So we said, see, we like Technal a lot, but uh, <laughs> we don't trust your shooting capability. So uh, jokes apart, uh, they tested it, uh, of course, without us behind it. And they were very happy and satisfied. So you should be always prepared and ready for various scenarios because uh, these kind of products uh, need to be tested and, and used only if you have the right certifications and the... Uh, and the um, test uh, test methodology witnessed by a third party of course so that was a bullet and now i i take the topic to blast resistance and uh, as you see in the image on the left when uh, the most important component is uh, where the blast is happening so this uh, car here or this unit here this is uh, the distance between this car and the facade is what we considered as the actual standoff distance. This is very important to know because this is this determines the kind of blast resistance which one should uh, design their their uh, project for. And and the and the amount of blast which could happen in, that is usually measured in kilograms uh, the amount of TNT which is being used. So when a blast happens there is a lot of things which happen. There is uh, first of all uh, an immediate impact pressure on the facade it's and, and it's mostly negative pressure because it when the blast happens you have the pressure and it tries to pull back all the components there is some drag happening uh, on the building there is side pressure and because of this negative pressure you also have over pressure from the top so you have a lot of pressures acting when a blast happens so your facade which is just a non-load bearing wall needs to withstand all this and when a test happens when we do the test uh, it is uh, mandatory that none of the glass component or the facade framing component should break and fall inside where people are inside the building. So that is generally the criteria to check whether um, the product has passed the blast resistance or not. So when the blast happens on the building, so let's imagine it's the same building, your security consultant will also uh, nominate the areas where there is high hazard, where there is uh, minimal hazard, as you see here in green, you have low hazard in yellow, and then you have no break or superficial damage, not even mentioned, not even shown in this elevation. So uh, in principle, this red area uh, definitely must be blast proof. And it is the choice and the decision of the security consultant to make the entire facade also blast proof. So that is a decision which the security consultant takes in us in, uh, in, co in collaboration with the architect to find out okay, which are the areas we should be really mindful about when designing the blast proof facade. And the ISO standards call for certain uh, classification. You know, that's how we relate how one product is better than another product. So the classification code is called EXV. So, and this is usually uh, what we call as a vehicle bomb uh, uh, standard. And what we have here is uh, 45, 33. These are all uh, referring to the distance from where the blast is happening from. So, so this rating has been uh, defined by the standards. So when, when a blast happens, if you see the animation below, uh, what we're trying to measure is really uh, is at what distance are we uh, detonating and at what, what is the weight of the, of the blast we're detonating and then uh, making sure that none of these elements of frames are breaking and falling inside. So how we do it, uh, uh, 
the blast proof facade from Technal is quite simple and straightforward. We have our standard cotton wool mullions and transoms. We're using special reinforcements which help you in stability. We have a patented mullion transom connector which helps to connect the mullion and transom. And these components in association with the glass. The glass which we use here is a double laminated glass. And when we use a double laminated glass, uh, it helps in the fact that when the blast happens, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't break, splutter and fall uh, inside. So a double laminated glass reinforcement and the special uh, mullion transom connector is really the components going into a blast proof curtain wall. Uh, so um, we have done several tests and I'm going to show you how uh, a real test happens from a blast proof condition. So we were doing this test for a particular project. So uh, the security consultant had uh, estimated that the detonation of the blast will happen somewhere around 55 kgs from the location, uh, sorry, uh, 40 meters from the location and the blast load is 55 kg. So initially the test was done only for this uh, criteria. Area. But uh, because we passed the test, and which I will show you how, we we were asked to double the loads. So we were asked to reduce the distance. So we brought it to 25 meters, and we doubled the blast load. So we made it 100 kg. So uh, during a test scenario, you have uh, you have um, the the sample, which is your specimen, and this is the distance which we measure. Usually, it's uh, as per the requirement of the project, and um, you have a lot of uh, um, you have the actual blast happening at this zone, and then you have uh, also a gauge block which is uh, trying to engage and measure the pressure which has been at the same distance as how the specimen is also. Uh, located at. So you have the measurement uh, elements here, you have the specimen here, and you have the blast location here, which is the red spot. So the kind of pressure which uh, the facade experience is quite phenomenal. I mean, the, the positive pressure, which uh, is around 29 Pascal during the first test, and with the rebound pressure, which was almost 218 kilopascal. Now, just to give you an idea, Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building, experiences somewhere around 3.5 kPa wind pressure. So we're talking about um, uh, 218 kilopascal as a rebound pressure. And in the second test, when we did at a distance of 25 meters, the rebound pressure was 398 kilopascal. So you can imagine the pressure the facade is experiencing. So the first test is a little slow motion video, but you will really see the, the impact. So that's the blast which had happened. And uh, you will see in just about a minute uh, how the facade is experiencing the blast. And there you see this ripple. So this is all the uh, immediate pressure and then it pulls it back. So that's your rebound pressure. And this was when we did the first test uh, at a distance of 40 meters with 55 kg of TNT. Now, when we did this entire test, the only thing which broke was your transom cap at the bottom. That's the only thing which disengaged and fell out. Apart from that, the whole specimen was intact. And that's why the client said, let's do a second test because the specimen is intact. As you see here in the right image, the transom is already dislocated. So we uh, reduced the distance, we brought it to 25 meters, and then we doubled the blast load. Now let's see what happened in this scenario. As you can see, that's the positive and then the negative pressure we're pulling out. And at this stage, the glass and the pressure plate and the cover cap have fallen outside. So in principle, this test is passed because there was no glass uh, no frames breaking and falling inside uh, where potentially uh, building occupants are present and available. So we got the classification of uh, EXV25, which is the uh, category which we passed here. Now let me show you uh, another video where we tested um, the doors and windows uh, at a similar uh, uh, category EXV25 with the 100 kg TNT load. Um, this was tested again in a military field uh, uh, within presence of a third party, of course. For a blast proof video, this is a very uh, romantic music, but I'm going to I'm going to really bring the volume down. Uh, so as you saw just now, you had the blast happening 
and we have two specimens. We have the curtain wall specimen and the door specimen. This is the curtain wall specimen. You can see in the slow motion, the, the positive pressure and then the uh, impulse negative pressure, which is pulling out the facade. So this is the test for the uh, curtain walling. And the similar one is done uh, for the doors as well, as you can see here. That's your positive and then the negative pressure, which is pulling out really the entire uh, unit. The next frame is a bit scary, but uh, I recommend you to watch at your own discretion. We have we had actually placed a camera inside the, the blast area. So to really see how this, uh, uh, this pressures uh, react. So by next frame, you will see inside. So this is how it looks from the inside. As you can see, this is that uh, pressure approaching the facade. And it really damages the glass, but because it's a bilaminated glass, it doesn't break and fall inside. And now you see the, the negative pressure acting, which is trying to pull out uh, the, the door unit. So um, the essential uh, requirement for a blast proof or a blast, sorry, a blast resistant door or a curtain wall is that uh, on that uh, on that load, it should not break and fall inside where people are present. So I believe uh, this video gives you a very good indication of how uh, the blast resistant uh, doors work. So uh, we have with us in our range, the curtain walling, the doors, uh, the hinge doors, hinge, uh, single leaf, double leaf and curtain walling. Uh, so these are some projects where we have used. I will not name them for uh, for the reason that this is a security reason, but a uh, project in Kuwait where we've used almost uh, 15,000 square meters of uh, blast proof EXP25, and this is a nice mall in Abu Dhabi uh, where we've used the blast load was quite high compared to what we have tested. So um, we had to do a lot of simulation. Uh, we worked with Thornton Tomasetti to do those simulations. Uh, to ensure that the impulse pressure here was 470 kilopascal. So we had to upgrade the profile to a 90 mm profile and a 300 mm mullion depth uh, to ensure that it takes on these kind of uh, blast loads. Then we come to our third component in terms of life safety, which is fire protection solutions. And again, I have uh, two components here I want to talk about. One is uh, your fire protection uh, doors and partitions and curtain walling. And then we have also uh, to talk about perimeter fire protection. So in fire, we have two components. Essentially, uh, we have to pay into attention as a basic for any layman. Uh, the category of fire classification, we have EI. So E stands for integrity and I stands for insulation. So what does this mean, uh, E integrity, is when there is a fire happening on, on one side of the room, for example, and your product or element is, uh, is kind of um, uh, in between you and the fire. And if this uh, withstands a particular uh, period of time, we call it integrity, but you cannot have any combustible material along this area where there's man standing because it could potentially catch fire. Then we have insulation category of classification where the same component, in spite of having this fire, uh, you have some non combust, you have some combustible material in this area. Uh, it doesn't catch fire. So you have not only uh, the product withstanding the fire, but also not transmitting any uh, heat waves uh, to potentially ca cause or harm fire. Essentially, you can actually touch the frame uh, glass for a particular period of time uh, when there is an EI category. So we are always looking at products which are EI category, which is giving you the most protection when it comes to fire. So we have uh, tested our uh, curtain walling system uh, for EI category for two ranges. One as we call as an interior curve or internal fire and other one is an exterior curve or an external fire. So the same curtain walling system which we use in traditional uh, projects, but we have some special components uh, with uh, some special intermittent material which helps in protecting from the fire to reach uh, to the mullions and uh, transoms. Why do people use uh, and why do people still prefer aluminum? Uh, just like the bulletproof, aluminum is a much more uh, lighter material. 
more color options are available on aluminum and it maintains again consistency uh, when you have uh, other aluminum components in your product. So imagine walking into a building where there is stainless steel um, uh, entrance doors and then you go inside the building you start having curtain wall which is made in aluminum. So you have a really huge, um, uh, uh, I would say, um, mismatch uh, in terms of uh, the aesthetics. It's always recommended to go with aluminum everywhere and aluminum as a product uh, can withstand up to 60 minutes for interior curve. So what I mean by interior curve is if the fire origin is inside and this product is exposed to that fire, then uh, we talked about interior curves where situations like a server room, situations like an MEP area where the source of fire could be inside the building is traditionally where interior curve classification is used. And let's say if you're in a parking lot and the source of fire is from outside or if your buildings, two buildings are uh, at a very, very narrow distance of let's say less than three meters, then you worry about exterior curve. So as a product, Technal, we have uh, both 60 minute interior curve and 120 minute uh, exterior curve. We also have uh, fire rated doors and partitions, which we have tested recently in a third party laboratory, uh, satisfying the civil defense requirements in UAE and uh, Bahrain and Oman, and also uh, fit for Saudi Arabia. So these fire rated doors, uh, again, have been tested for 60 minutes. We have tested in several configurations as a single leaf, as a double leaf, and as a, as a free uh, edge partition, which means you can have it as a really long, wide profile. And uh, these have been tested and, uh, and approved by civil defense. So as an aluminum product, uh, you have a lightweight material, you have a sustainable product because it's absolutely recyclable. You have several color options uh, on these doors. So you are free to choose any color, uh, uh, which is matching your existing design intent and and you have a tested product which is uh, again giving you a complete uh, peace of mind the other element which uh, we want to talk about is uh, uh, which is for your regular curtain walling your regular facade and your facade cannot be using fully fire rated curtain walling it doesn't make sense to go for a full facade uh, to be fire rated. However, there are zones in every building, as you see here, this blue uh, blue line. This is a gap which is traditionally a very important gap and a potential risk for several projects. And um, we call this the perimeter edge in any building. And this is the gap between the back of the mullion and edge of the slab. And we people call it different names. Some people call it spandrel area and so on. So this zone, which is uh, which is missing, is a is a potential opportunity for fire in the event of it to uh, to really uh, come in to your floor above, and this is a, a risky zone which people have to take attention uh, <clears throat> attention for in a project or while designing a, a project. Uh, we have collaborated with a company called SideRise from UK, who are market leaders in uh, fire stop uh, protection. And together we have done a lot of R&D uh, to ensure how a system can be tested because uh, most often uh, what people do in the market is they go for a two-part system, uh, which is not tested with the actual uh, aluminum facade system. And you're using components from different parts and there is no uh, way to trace where the original components are coming from. So we as Technal, we took a bold step uh, to, to do a lot of R&D testing. And one of the first tests which we did was to a standard called 1364. And in my opinion, this is the most rigorous and the most uh, intensive test to, to test that zone, that spandrel zone or the perimeter zone as we call it. So as you see here, uh, we have... Um, we have tested a, a typical spandrel zone, which is a 900 mm and a 375 mm twin spandrel configuration. And we have three distinct components here. One is your thermal insulation, which is standard across any spandrel you will notice. You have two layers of fireboard. These are essentially protecting the spandrel. This is a very important uh, topic because in Dubai, in UAE, our fire and life safety code uh, talks about protecting the spandrel, not only protecting the edge of the uh, perimeter but also protecting the spandrel so it's a very important component to protect your spandrel and then we have the actual fire stop material so we tested this whole uh, component so you have uh, the technal geode uh, curtain wall system the thermal insulation is from a rockwell supplier and then you have the fireboards and the uh, fire stop material coming in from side rise 
So this whole uh, arrangement was uh, tested in a lab called Effectus. This is a quick, quick demonstration of how we did the installation. So first we have your slab. This is a traditional slab condition and you have your transoms and mullions. So first you bring in with your back pan. This is where you install your traditional thermal insulation material. And then you you put in the first layer of the side rise fiber, second layer, and then you you conceal it and you tie it to your facade, and then you bring in your uh, fire stop material and then you place it in position. So now your uh, your facade is ready in terms of uh, being fully fire safe across the spandrel. Please note that this curtain wall is a non-fire rated curtain wall. The glass which we're using is a traditional non-fire rated glass. So when we are doing the test. Uh, uh, and, and when you saw the, the test chamber, just go back to that slide, um, you are actually uh, constantly putting a lot of pressure on this arrangement. And uh, what happens at this stage uh, when there's excessive fire, you have uh, this fire trying to push out. Uh, and so there is a lot of horizontal movements. And this slab is also experiencing fire. So your slab deflects. So you have a vertical movement. So in terms of testing, your uh, your fire stop arrangement with the with the curtain wall system technal you are having the most uh, rigorous and vigorous condition here because you have horizontal movements and you have vertical movements so your fire stop and the system should be able to take care of these horizontal and vertical movements so that is what we essentially uh, tested this condition for in the lab and uh, this is how uh, the test evolved. As you see here, the same diagram, which I showed earlier, this is the real life picture. So you have your uh, traditional mullions and transom. You have the glass. Behind this, you can see the uh, uh, spandrel uh, insulation with the aluminum back pan. And is an image from the top. You see here the side rise uh, fire stop and the two layers of fireboard, which are then connected to your edge of the slab. So you have a real life slab condition. See so this test, uh, it took six months to get ready because they actually cast the concrete as per the real life uh, site conditions. So uh, at the end of three hours, we noticed that there was uh, no, uh, no damage to the glass. There was no damage uh, to the fire stop. It completely withstood the movements horizontally and vertically. And we achieved three hours of integrity and insulation. So these thermocouples, which you see here, they're constantly measuring the temperature difference. So only at about three minutes, 15 seconds, the glass broke and, uh, and we were able to call the test uh, finish and complete but for three hours your fire stop has been withstanding uh, the system and the fire stop has been withstanding uh, the the effect of this fire happening horizontally and the slab deflecting up and down so this is the curve, uh, temperature curve, which uh, which we received at the end of the test. Uh, and as you see here in the data screen, it shows the readings of various thermocouples which were installed on the facade. And uh, the slab deflection uh, was up for 25 mm. So imagine if you have a very weak uh, system and a fire stop, you have potential risk of fire to pass through it and the frame deflection which uh, the technal system encountered was about 12 mm these are very significantly big uh, movements uh, which you have to we have to consider um, the another test methodology is what uh, the American standard calls for is ASTM 2307. Now ASTM 237 compared to the 1364 is a fairly lenient test in the sense that as you notice the test arrangement, it is an open chamber test. So there is no constant pressure uh, being built up on the, on the curtain wall. Uh, you have two burners. One is the window burner and one is the uh, burner inside the room burner as they call it. And during this test, we are again uh, trying to test the performance of the spandrel and the system which is being, uh, being involved and integrated with this fire stop. So uh, again, the idea is that uh, there should be no uh, excess temperature readings on the thermocouples and in the observation room we are measuring always uh, if the if the fire stop or the system is breaking or getting um, any kind of damage uh, because of this fire testing scenario 
So this was the test arrangement which we created. Again, we collaborated with SideRise on this uh, particular R&D exercise. So this was at uh, zero uh, at the beginning, at the start. As you can see here, we have the window burner and we have the room burner inside, which you can't see in this image, but it's inside. You have the standard cut walling. You have the standard back pan insulation. These are standard glass, which we use, not fire rated glass. And on the inside, as you see here, uh, we have again the protected spandrel, which is your two layers of fireboard. We have the fire stop and we have the technal cut walling system. So when we started the test off, this is at five minutes, you can see immediately the impact of the window burner. It is very aggressive uh, flame. And, um, and at, at about two hours, we noticed uh, most of the framing here melted, but still the, the fire stop system was completely working fine. Again, at an end of three hours, we noticed that the entire face of the facade has been uh, burnt, but uh, no uh, visibility of fire inside the room or no damage to the fire stops. At about three hours, 15 again minutes, we found that the temperature readings were quite higher compared to the standard uh, testing requirements. So once again, as per 1364, uh, which was a much more rigorous test, we did the 2307 test just to comply and satisfy to the local requirements. And I'll explain to you why that is important in the coming slides. So uh, we were able to complete this. And in the new SBZ uh, 2018 code, um, it is calling for the uh, facade uh, non-fire rated assemblies to be tested for 2307. And what they've mentioned is uh, the F rating or, or the time uh, for this test should be not less than the fire assistant rating of the floor. So if your floor is one hour fire rated, you want the spandrel to be also fire rated. And as um, as practicing architects, I highly recommend to ask for protected spandrel because it gives you complete protection for the unit. And our test evidence proves that we have uh, we have enough data to uh, to satisfy the requirements not only of the code but also safe design in the buildings. So this is a very important factor which one should consider uh, when it comes to uh, fire protection in the facade as well. The last uh, component in terms of fire safety, uh, in terms of life safety, is uh, forced entrance. And my colleague Khaled touched upon this briefly yesterday while he was explaining the Lumial system. But I want to talk a little bit in detail uh, about the categories and about the test uh, resistance classes. So first of all. Um, uh, this is a test uh, which we do to check the sturdiness of the frame. So what we uh, test for is uh, a standard robber who can use various tools to break into a house, right? So that is the whole concept. And we, when we do the test, we check for three different kinds of uh, uh, infiltration. One is your static uh, uh, tools, uh, which is static effort, which, which the robber puts a dynamic uh, effort. And then also you have the manual break in attempt with different types as per the class. So when we do the manual, uh, and this is what our test conditions refer to, there are several classes. So from RC1 to RC6. Now RC1 is, uh, is something which refers to the person trying to uh, break in with standard physical force. So if you go in and just start pressing and pushing and if the window force or uh, window doesn't fall, uh, then you are having RC1 category. And this is done for three minutes. So there is no test per se, but for three minutes, um, you are trying to open and trying to shake. And if it doesn't uh, open, then you get automatically RC1. So most of the products traditionally have RC1 built in. RC2 is a bit of a physical force with some small tools. So uh, this test is again done for a period of three minutes. And in three minutes, if the person or the robber is able to break in with small tools, then he doesn't get the certification. But for uh, three minutes, if there is, a, there is a delay and they're not able to open in, you get that classification. RC3 is a bit more complicated. It is physical force with tools like crowbar and a crowbar is like the, the gentleman which is having here is a crowbar and if we breaks in and this is a very strong um, break in element um, uh, for people who have tried to break in houses uh, uh, this this is a very strong tool and if for five minutes if there is no damage or breakage then your product gets rc3 so in the world of windows doors and facade rc3 is the most uh, most highest kind of rating for a regular residential window door product. 
Um, and RC4, it, it, the, the tools use gets more stronger and stronger. So when they use a specific electric tools, it's uh, RC5. If they use hydraulic and electric tools, then RC6. So in terms of uh, category of uh, products which Technal has, in the door category, we have uh, up to RC3. Uh, which is again a very a good rating for a conventional residential product in windows we have up to rc2 in sliders lumial is rated as one of the most uh, uh, most strongest product in this category so it has about rc3 and curtain walling is rc2 one of our guests even asked how does the um, curtain wall get rc2 it is it is the same uh, uh, criteria so physical force used with few small tools and it is it is withstanding that effort for three minutes therefore we have tested this under this criteria and we have the rc2 so our connectors in the mullion transom um, our uh, uh, pressure plates they're all so well engineered that it can withstand uh, any kind of burger burglar ingress for about three minutes to achieve this rc2 category so for those who, uh, who who didn't attend yesterday this is just a further explanation of how we're getting this rc3 category so one in the hinge door we have a specific patented reinforced lock and a reinforced hinge and a reinforced striker so this enables us to get further stability on the hinge door that is why we were able to get the rc3 category now for the lumial slider it's quite interesting the first factor is our form factor of the slider itself is unique the sash is concealed it is inside the frame and the locking mechanism is inside right and the the problem is uh, the robot does not even know where the lock is in this particular slider so that's the first biggest plus point so your lumial slider offers you that rc3 category so for a slider to get rc3 is very very difficult very complicated and because of a concealed sash we were able to achieve this unique uh, classification so for those of you who didn't attend there's a small video of uh, of how we tested our lumial now in this particular uh, test scenario uh, we after the exhibition in one of a big exhibition fair we decided instead of just throwing the window we'll uh, call a professional robber and ask him to try to open it well he's not a professional robber but at least he's dressed like one but he's using the tools you can see the crowbar is being used here though that is the tool required for the rc3 category so he's trying to break in through the through the door frame and this is again measured for five minutes so he has to do the break-in within five minutes uh, and 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 the concept is that within this five minutes uh, there is some kind of alert uh, for the for the occupant inside because a lot of noise coming in and today there are a lot of um, automated uh, devices which can be connected to your system so any kind of disengagement uh, on the door it uh, prompts an alert to the homeowner that somebody is trying to break in so uh, this is uh, enough time for the resident or the occupant to to pay some attention that there is a potential um, uh, forced entry into your house or into your residence <clears throat> You may ask why burglar resistance is very important in our region. Nowadays, we have a lot of uh, villas which are row houses. Your practic practically your neighbor can enter and uh, and uh, reach your house by uh, by an arm's distance. So we never know. We never know when a forced entry situation would happen. So in that uh, aspect having a slider which is uh, at no extra cost you're getting a slider which is automatically uh, rc3 uh, classified it's a big benefit for your project so here's a gentleman uh, trying to open again on the other side he's trying to break open but because of this uh, unique concealed sash design he's unable to to break in uh, to the house i'll just forward a little bit more uh, as you see here he's trying to break the locks with the hammer so it's another uh, element used to break in so these are all factors which affect your uh, classification of uh, forced entry i'll just push to a little bit more further as you see here now he's trying to break open through the sash in the bottom is is trying to see if there's any way which he can lock in because the lumial is uh, having multi point locking it is very difficult uh, for the for any kind of forced entry to happen easily so um, i think this is about 5 minutes and he's uh, really giving up on on trying to open 
and uh, and he says yeah maybe some other sliding door so that's a quick uh, demonstration of the security solutions which we had all right so in conclusion um, i just want to take a quick recap on the topics we discussed today first and foremost security is important because we are spending a lot of time within closed spaces and especially during this pandemic era uh, we are spending more time in how in the homes with our loved ones so as architects as designers as we designing buildings for the future we have to pay uh, this uh, factor into attention not to take uh, security uh, factors lightly one of the first things which we saw today was the bullet resistance uh, we talked about the different categories from fp1 to fp7 we saw some videos of how the bulletproof uh, products are tested for the various categories we talked about the blast resistant solutions we 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 saw the importance of uh, working closely with a security consultant to understand where your um, uh, your center of burst is uh, what kind of pressure the building is exposed to and uh, how to tackle those negative pressures and remember the test is the test evidence is important to prove that you are using the right product in the building and every building uh, has a certain impact on the facade not all the facade needs to be blast resistant but these are all simulations done with the help of a security consultant to analyze which zones need to be um, need to be blast resistant and as a, as a system it's a very simple system by laminated glass with a special uh, patented cut mold system technol you you sorted fire protection solutions we talked about uh, fire rated curtain walls we talked about fire rated partitions and doors and then we talked about the perimeter fire protection so we talked about uh, the importance of uh, protecting your spandrel uh, against any kind of fire movement from floor to floor every project condition is unique so please discuss with us uh, we'd be happy to work with you with our uh, partner sidrise to uh, to simulate the right detailing for you and uh, the devil lies in the detail so it's very important that as designers we pay at close attention to making the right details for the project even at the design stage and last but not the least we talked about the forced entry resistance products which is quite important especially to ensure that there is no theft or any kind of robbery uh, we can have these facilities in our standard product you're not paying anything extra to have such forced resist uh, forced uh, resistant classification on your product these are all built in standard available from technol so you're more than happy to talk to us uh, whenever you need to protect your buildings especially Uh, uh villas which have open gardens and uh, row houses which don't have any uh, barricades between uh, villas or homes i think these are important uh, factors to consider right so that brings an end to our session i bring back uh, uh bader on stage thank you very much for being a patient audience i hope the session was of uh, some interest and at this point in time i would like to invite uh, bader back on the on the on the forum here to uh, guide us through the next steps for q and a session and uh, the polls of course thank you so much mr ervin for your uh, informative session uh, right now i've opened the uh, the, uh, the chat for uh, all of your questions to be received eli ando asila yqdar yirsalha ala alhisab haq arkinet حد نسالها الاستاذ ايرفند في نهايه اللكتشر so for now mr ervin do you want to you want to start the poll yes i think we should do the poll so uh, my questions are up and i think the poll uh, questions are also been loaded yeah uh, i will start the poll the second as well as yep. the uh, as i said the uh, direct messaging is uh, enabled for anyone who has an answer towards uh, that is going to be uh, directed to Mr. Ervin at the end of the session. Yes, uh, do the polling on the poll and the questions on the chat box. Definitely. <laughs> okay, so the first question, what are the types of protection systems available in Technal? Uh, options are A bulletproof, B blast proof, C fire rated, D burglar resistance and E all of the above that's the first question second question what is the highest bulletproof rating system available with technal is it fb4 fb5 fb6 or is it fb7 the third question 
is uh, what burglar resistance certification does the Lumia sliding door have? Is it RC1, is it RC2, is it RC3? The fourth question, as per SBC 2018, which standards are followed for the facade perimeter fire protection? Is it EN 1364 part four, or is it the ASTM E2307, or is it C, none of the above? The last question, the Technal brand, is it originally from France, is it from Germany, is it from UAE, or is it from Saudi Arabia? I hope everyone gets this correct. This is, this is a very important question for me. <laughs> So we have more than 40% voted. So we're gonna let people to again, some more time to complete the voting because this is very important for us to know how well we have communicated the message to you. <laughs> of course. So we have 74% voted. So please uh, have a look onto your polling tab. If you can't find it, please let us know. We can probably guide you. Yes, again, for the people that don't know where the uh, poll is, it's right next to the uh, participants icon. You click on it and then all of the questions would appear and then you'll be able to answer through there. So at this time, uh, I would, uh, while they are still answering the poll, I would like to invite you to make note of our survey link. Please do give us your feedback. It is very important for us to enhance our content in the future webinars. And this will also help us to know a little bit about you and we can uh, use this to issue your certificates of attendance. So please, um, the link has been changed now. Some people could not uh, could not uh, uh, fill in their feedback uh, in the last couple of days. We will find a way to uh, sort that out. But for today, we have opened up a new link, so this should not have any problem. So please, I invite you to either take a quick QR scan of this link or uh, request Bader to flash this link on the chat box. I've, I've done that already, Mr. Oh, fantastic, brother. You're the best. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Yeah. So please uh, take your time to give us your feedback. And that is really, really critical for us. And um, here's our contacts. Uh, this is me and Khalid who are available. If you have any clarification on our products and solutions, feel free to reach us. And of course, uh, once the poll is done, we will do some Q&A as well. So we have 92% who have voted. So for the last few, uh, it's just about eight people remaining. Yeah. There is no wrong answer. Feel free to answer it, no problem. <laughs> yeah.
I think we're almost done, just about two or three people remaining. Yeah, I believe in all of our attendees today. <laughs> all of them will be able to participate in the poll. There you yes. go. There you go, 100% vote done. Fantastic, today is a great audience. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you want to end the poll, then we can have a look at the results. Okay, super. So the first question, what are the types of protection systems available in Technal? And the right answer is yes, Technal has bulletproof, blastproof, fire rated, and burglar resistance systems. So the correct answer is all of the above. So well done for those who got that correct. The uh, second one is what is the highest bulletproof rating system available with Technal? Is it FP4, FP5, FP6, or FP7? The right answer is FP7. So again, 62% have got this correct. Fantastic. Well done. What is the burglar resistance certification for Lumial? And the right answer, as we saw in the video, is RC3. Lumial has one of the highest burglar resistance certifications. So that's uh, fantastic. 63% uh, have got it. And as per the SBC, what are the standards followed for perimeter fire protection? Is it 1364? Is it uh, ASTM 2307? And the answer is uh, B, correct. 52% have got it right. It's 2307. But of course, 1364 is a much more uh, vigorous test standard, which is something which uh, we also use widely in the region. Uh, the Technal brand, where is it originally from? Oh, we have 97% getting the right answer. That's fantastic. So it's growing uh, from day one till now. Still, we have some people thinking it's from Germany and definitely it's not from UAE. Of course, yes, we have uh, presence in the UAE and of course, presence in the South, in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But the right answer, the brand is originally from South of France. It's from Toulouse. Remember, the reigning world champions in football is France Airbus and Eiffel Tower. Great, so a big round of applause to all the audience. They've got all the answers correct, and that gives me a lot of joy. Mother, yeah. over to you. That's a lot. Thank you, Mr. Arvind, for going over the uh, results. Um, might we move to the questions? Um, yes. We've received a uh, few, um, and I've ended the uh, questions session because uh, there's a look, a handful of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So the first question would be, does Technal have a uh, profile system to incorporate photovoltaic glasses? I know it's not in relation to firefighting, but uh, we kind of talked about it yesterday. Yes. So the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, we have the system which can uh, incorporate BIPV panels on the facade and also on the skylight. So if you need some information, uh, uh, feel free to say hello to us and we'd be happy to uh, work with you and uh, uh, give you the solution. Perfect. The uh, next question is in relation to uh, door specifications. So uh, what are the uh, door types that Technal might provide? Or do, in terms of insulation, so fire rating? Uh, yes. Also, the uh, RC rating and all of that. I believe uh, that participant has uh, is asking um, about the availability of those uh, types as well in, in in the Saudi market. So yes, um, to answer your question, we have both fire rated and non fire rated solutions. We have uh, bulletproof, blast proof, as as you also saw. Um, when you talk about specifications, uh, the most important criteria, air tightness, water tightness, structural stability, all these are the basic ones, uh, including thermal performance and acoustic. All these performances are uh, part of our system. And in addition to that, you have the safety uh, requirements like we saw today. All these products are available in the in the GCC uh, market, especially in Saudi Arabia. We have uh, a wonderful uh, set of partners who work with us in Riyadh, in Jeddah, in Eastern Province. Uh, so uh, all these products are available uh, locally. I'm very proud to say that uh, even our uh, profiles today, we are manufacturing in Saudi Arabia to ensure that we contribute back to the economy in Saudi. 
So all the accessoires, they come from France and the profiles are locally manufactured. So this helps in two things. One, as I told you, the in-country value helping and giving back to Saudi. And the second one is uh, uh, to deliver uh, turnaround times very fast and uh, support the local requirement. Amazing. Uh, the uh, second question is in relation to uh, noise. Mm -hmm. uh, the effect of noise on curtain walls. Uh, actually, both of those attendees have asked uh, or brought the example of airports or curtain walls and uh, glass uh, windows or glass yes. curtain walls in airports and how yes. uh, and the uh, their ability to resist uh, forces uh, such as uh, sound and all of that. So, uh, what? Uh, how how does it work? Is the question. Uh, great question. Uh, uh, let me expand the answer a little bit. We just completed working uh, on the design stage for uh, an army base where we're talking about not just commercial flights, but we're talking about F-16s and uh, uh, super fighter jets, jets which uh, land, which we, which 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 kind of fly around in Mach 1 to Mach 3 speeds. Um, so in these kind of scenarios, we're talking about a huge amount of sound, uh, which uh, could potentially affect the facade. So uh, STC uh, 50 would be a, would be an ideal uh, criteria uh, to work around with in such cases. And uh, we recently completed the exercise for an STC 50 category glass, which was a triple glass, uh, triple glazed unit used uh, along with our highly thermally insulated uh, unitized facade. So uh, it all boggles down to what kind of uh, sound performance you need, uh, what is your environment, uh, and you need to choose the right glass along with the right frame. As we talked uh, day before yesterday, uh, the the RW is not just the glass, but it is also a combination factor of glass and frame. So in, in airport conditions, you can experience anywhere around 70 to 90 dB of noise. So you need to have a good amount of weight reduction uh, to have it uh, have a pleasant environment inside the rooms, inside the occupant area. But you should not over design also. You know, there was a big case study done on National Geographic. Uh, there were some airports where it was so silent that when the flights were moving, people inside the building uh, went uh, a little bit claustrophobic because uh, human mind associates movement with noise. Uh, so when they find a, a too quiet a place next to a noisy environment is also not so good. So it's a, it's a beautiful balance, which uh, usually uh, involves the help of an acoustic specialist who will determine the zones where you need a certain amount of sound reduction. And it is a very psychological thing as well. So as I mentioned, a too quiet a place is also not so good. I hope that answers the, the question. Yeah, and you also see that in uh, car manufacturers as well. You mentioned Tesla and all those uh, co yes. great companies. Uh, they, they've actually, uh, their, their uh, noise insulation systems have gone uh, or have been developed uh, to, to a point where almost the, the noise would be second to none yes. in the car itself or within the cabinet. And that's why... Yes. The uh, sound engineers had to develop a, a hissing sound or yes. <laughs> uh, background noise just to yes. make uh, the uh, occupants of those cars feel less uh, spot on. Spot exactly. on, spot on, yeah. Too quiet is also not good, you know. We are humans, we need some drama, we need some noise, <laughs> we need some life around us, you know. So yeah. too, noise is not a bad thing, but too much noise is a bad thing because that, that can affect you. So it's just a nice balance. Every building is unique. You don't need to have a 50 dB STC or 50 dB RW on a, on a quiet villa, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's just a matter of where your facade is and a good framing system, hopefully Technal, uh, with a good glass combination. And that, uh, of course, with our tools, one of those tools I will show you tomorrow is the Tech Acoustic, uh, which is again a nice, uh, interesting tool where we simulate um, uh, acoustic performances of uh, windows, doors and facade. So these are uh, tools by which you can actually simulate the right um, window door uh, for your project. Definitely. 
I believe that brings us to the end of our session today. Uh, I would like to thank you first, Mr. Irvin, for a very inform uh, informative session and our guests or attendees that have bared with us uh, all the way to the end of uh, uh, an hour and uh, 30 minutes long session. <laughs> uh, yes. But yeah, definitely informative. And for anyone that have missed the point throughout the session, please make sure to follow us on our YouTube uh, channel where we'll upload uh, all of uh, our sessions with Techno along with uh, all of our other sessions uh, uh, on Zoom. And don't forget to join us tomorrow, inshallah, for another session with Techno in relation to uh, facade technologies. Thank you, Bada. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the entire Akinet team uh, for putting this through. Uh, thank you, audience, uh, for being very patient and being with us. And uh, God willing, we see you tomorrow. An interesting session on BIM and some digital tools. Uh, so anyone who is in the architectural field uh, or in the facade consultancy space, anyone interested in, uh, in just designing beautiful facades, and uh, please join us tomorrow. It'll be an interesting session, I promise. Good night and wish you a pleasant and safe evening. Thank you very much, Badr. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night.